Let's talk about grief. The definition of grief is deep sorrow caused by loss, especially that caused by someone's death. I know, it's probably not your favorite subject. I became interested in how we heal from grief after I lost my adoptive grandmother. Her death was the first time I felt the terrible ache of losing someone I loved. My journey into this field began as I witnessed my mother suffering. I felt alone, and I could see she did too. And it led me to try to figure out how to support people in finding grace through their grief journeys. So, I became a certified thanatologist, which means I have developed an expertise in the scientific study of death, dying, and bereavement. Human beings are wired for stories because stories connect us. We're wired for connection. We're meant to be together. And when we lose someone or something dear, it impacts our physical and emotional well-being. And we grieve. In fact, we are forever changed. Every human being, every person in this room has or will experience some form of grief in their lifetime. But we don't grieve together, like I did, like my mother did. It turns out we grieve alone and sorrow often disconnects us from each other. As a society, the United States could really improve how we tend to cope with grief. It's not uncommon to lose a loved one and then be expected to return to our daily routine soon after. Some people return to work the day after a loss. It seems crazy but it's true. Generally, we suffer in isolation with the expectation that we will overcome our grief in a reasonably short amount of time. We'll get over it, right? A friend of mine underwent open-heart surgery, and her recovery took about eight weeks. And while grief is far from surgical, I had the thought that grief is a wound to the heart. It creates a scar that those on the outside cannot see. The process of grieving is internal work. It's soul work. I'm also a high school counselor, and through my years working in predominantly immigrant communities, I have found that suffering a loss comes in all kinds of forms. Many of my students have survived traumatic experiences, some tragic, like the loss of a loved one, some painful, like the loss of a pet, or a terrible health crisis. Some have lost their homes in weather-related incidents. Many of my students are immigrants and have experienced the adjustment of arriving in the United States and leaving their familial home, the loss of family and friends, the loss of security, and the loss of identity. In 2019, our school tragically lost a student in a terrible accident. And her death sparked a profound feeling of sadness for all of us. The suffering was so pervasive among our students that we quickly formed a grief group. We didn't have a roadmap, and it wasn't easy, but I learned a couple of things I like to share. The first and most obvious discovery is that positive transformation can be achieved when students are supported in their grief journeys. And yes, loved. For youth, confronting grief is uncomfortable. 
in the glow of youth, the unthinkable shock of having someone you love die is absolutely destabilizing. And young people grieve in their own unique way because most teenagers need to build trust before expressing their grief emotions. So how do you support an active, busy, grieving teen? First, you build trust. We gathered, we created space to be in community in our grief. Through team building activities, I encouraged them to open up and they nurtured empathy and connected deeply. After we knew we could trust each other, to simply be in each other's presence, to acknowledge our hurt and suffering as a group, students began to share their thoughts and feelings. And while each student's grieving process was different, we no longer felt isolated and alone. And together, grief group decided they wanted to do something to honor and memorialize the student we lost, which they did in a meaningful way, creating a permanent memorial to the friend they so dearly loved. By witnessing interfaith memorials and by building meaningful connections, healing happened. And that led to my second realization that humans heal through meaningful connections. And a beautiful thing happened. Our grief group transformed into what is now known at our school as the Hope Club. The Hope Club continued to provide support to each other, to the teachers and our community. They volunteered with hospice and with the local film festival. Being in service to others gives us a big hit of the feel-good hormone dopamine. <laughs> When Hope Club members showed up in service, their healing was accelerated. These opportunities to engage in multicultural activities hold deep significance to them. For example, students learned about and participated in Dia de los Muertos, the Day of the Dead, a tradition in which the deceased are honored and remembered. My students took the lead in creating calaveritas de azúcar, sugar skull making, and painting activities, as well as created luminarias and an ofrenda, a memorial altar that has photos and special items to honor those who have passed. So, grief leads us to hope. And hope leads us to action. And action makes us resilient. Hope Club created a circle of love and healing. My students are healing together, but they've helped me to heal and become more resilient too. We can't choose what happens to us, but we can choose how we respond. My students taught me that and I'm so grateful. Because a few months ago, my husband was battling for his life in the hospital. And each day seemed like an eternity. But I knew I wasn't alone, no matter how isolated I felt. And it helped me find my own hope. And I saw that I was able to embody the principles I teach. I'm a person of faith. And whether it's hope in a higher power or hope in medicine, my hope came through shared experience. It was almost as if I was meant to create the Hope Club. And in helping others, I helped myself too. To this day, our Hope Club continues to provide students with positive outlets to express their grief, to face the painful reality that, yes, death is an inevitable part of life. 
and they're helping their teachers heal from the grief of losing family members. The teachers at my school have expressed such gratitude and appreciation for my Hope Club students. Hope Club continues to provide a safe haven for newcomers who may feel lost in a new culture. And in a time where young people, all of us really, are experiencing so much collective grief, multiple crises associated with anxiety and trauma, like gun violence, a global pandemic, climate crisis and war, I see an even bigger and more universal need for Hope Club. In fact, I call myself a hopeologist now. <laughs> Because I know that when we come together in community, in the most difficult of times, we unleash the most human of superpowers, hope. And I hope, I hope you'll consider establishing a Hope Club in your schools, in your communities. Let's talk about death, loss, and grief. Let's grieve together and heal together to create a path to resilience for anyone but especially for our youth. Because healthier children make healthier adults. In the midst of so much grief, let's create the profound power of hope.